Right, kia ora everyone. I'm sitting here with, uh, for a long time, known as Jay. <laughs> I was, I was cr- secret name. Yeah, I was cracking up because like I'd forgotten about all that stuff, like being in special forces that you couldn't really say who you were. And I went back and listened to your catalogue, and I was like, Jay, Jay. You know, I hear Jordan. Yeah, 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 whatever. And then all of a sudden, the episodes changed to Hey, it's Fitzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I go to start the episode and I go to say Jay and I'm like, no, I can say my name and then say my name. So yeah, <laughs> that's a good place to start. What's the what's the deal with with being in the force that you can't really reveal yourself? Um, so yeah, it's quite an interesting one too because I guess we're, we're quite Americanized and we see a lot of guys um, on the American front. I guess Tim Kennedy's one of them. Yeah, where I think he's still at least like got a foot in the door with uh, American Special Forces. Um, is he Green Beret? Green Beret, yeah. 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 yeah, they also, also like, what's Special Forces to them is different to us and their terminology, a little bit different. But, yeah, I guess with the Americans, like, depending on what role or what gig they have, like, they can still say that they do that and have an Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, I know Green Berets that go on ops, come back from ops, and then I, like, I watch their accounts because I like their shit, uh, their content. Um, and they're posting like firefights in Afghanistan where like if you did that here in New Zealand so essentially it comes down to policy policy like if you did that in New Zealand like you'd be hung you know what I mean like you'd be hung you'd be probably court-martialed um, so not not actually hung yeah. um, but you know you'd be hung out the dry for sure like because there's operational security and then per sec or personal security so yeah. I guess we're just a lot stricter like even to the point of when I was regular force and we were over in Afghanistan like I posted nothing because they were just so tight. Like, do not post anything that can jeopardize operational security. So I'm like, cool, I'll just post nothing. Yeah. You know, where again, if you look on the American front, like you can have dudes downrange, like fucking in contact, like on Instagram, you know, it's, it's just a real cultural thing. We're just really tight lipped about who we are and what we do. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it's, I guess that underlying realistically, it's just policy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, and so to make sure that I still maintained a career, <laughs> um, I kept it. I kept it pretty tight lipped. So the guys that are in special forces that get medals without anyone knowing, um, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, definitely in my time, I would have seen a couple of medal ceremonies that I don't know would it, that would have made it outside the unit. <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> this, this is going back to the Afghanistan days. You know, guys getting. Um, gallantry medals and shit like that for, yeah. for doing, you know, putting themselves into harm way, into harm's way um, on a spectacular level and like you sit there and nine times out of ten like you know the guy, mm. he probably trained you coming into the unit um, so they could be a corporal or sergeant by now and then you're just like hearing their citation of what they did on operations and you're just like wow that's fucking hardcore <laughs> and yeah, you don't know about it till the ceremony um, and no one else knows about it it's just realistic yeah, yeah yeah it is very need to know yeah, <laughs> yeah. so then like um, I can't think of the name of the movie it's on Netflix that Sebastian Younger made um, in Afghanistan is there any of that Korongol no it's it, was in the, it was the one in Korongol Valley and it was called Restrepo Oh yeah, the the yeah, 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 yeah. That's hardcore, right? That's oh, nuts. Is there any of that going on in the New Zealand military, like getting a media in there or getting journalists in there or anything like that? Or mm, I think on the New Zealand front, the only media we're getting is the likes of, um, oh, I can't remember his name, Slimy Journo. Pretty much the hit and run stuff. Yeah, can't remember the journalist's name. That's how much I like him. Um, <laughs> but essentially, no. When we get journalism, it's generally it's not all. It's not always. It's not always. But I feel like generally in New Zealand, like if and and when, the journalist or public will attack the military. Sometimes you know, right. yeah. you know, So you got the whole hit and run book. Um, instead of painting the good work we did, you know, like in other parts of Afghanistan, this isn't in, in talking looking up to Barmian province now. Like in other parts of Afghanistan, compared to Barmian, like. Other nations are sitting there, you know, like leveling compounds and fucking blowing people to smithereens and Shit. all sorts of other stuffs going on. And they're in, and they're in, they're they're seeing a lot of combat and there's a lot of conflict going on. And then you look up to where we are in Barmian province, and it is different because there's a different, um, the, you know, there's, there's different tribes up there and all the rest of it and how it all works and different, I guess, eth- ethnicities within Afghanistan. Um, but still, nonetheless, like up in Afghanistan, in, in the mountains where we were, in the Hindu Kush mountains, like we're 
we did a lot of good work, you know, like there's mm. the odd contact and stuff like that. But like, you know, if you're in contact, you know, you obviously fucking, you're going to fire back. You're going to get amongst it and all the rest of it. But at the same time, such a euphemism that a contact. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, at, at the same time, like the amount of human, humanitarian aid we had, the yeah. relationships that we had, you know, like we had phenomenal relation, relationships with the locals. Um, we had phenomenal relationships with our interpreters, you know, like we've brought a lot of them back mm -hmm. to New Zealand. Um, and so we did a lot of good work with, um, you know, we did do security stuff and night patrolling and like looking for fucking bad dudes and all that, all the stuff that you wanted to as a young man. But, you know, like I remember there, we you know, securing a, a drop zone and mm. American airplanes are flying over the top, hiffing food and supplies out the back. You know, and like that's coming crashing into the DZ and we're working with the local warlords to divvy that out to the tribes and that so they can eat better over winter and we're giving um, children school books and stuff that, you know, colouring and books and pens and pencils and, you know, like you got kids and adults running around in like plastic shoes and so we're like taking <laughs> proper warm kit and yeah. we're doing heaps of stuff and their medical facilities are just underwhelmingly supplied, you know, and they are in the Hundukush Mountains, the middle of buttfuck nowhere and so, you know, we're going in taking a look at their medical facilities, the medics are doing phenomenal jobs um, and, and looking what money and resources needs to go into improving the level of healthcare and stuff. But, you know, all we get, I seem to see, um, is, you know, journalists coming in trying to just find any bad thing like an SAS contact that mm -hmm. happened, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And trying to murky up the waters there. Yeah. yeah. So on, on the New Zealand perspective, how integrated are we as a military force or are you guys self-sufficient? In, in terms of getting in there, you know, are you working with, you know, how are you getting there, is that a wear force, how are you getting dropped in? Is, yeah, is so I, I guess, if you, I mean, like, how, in an operational theatre, how self-sufficient are we? Yeah. Um, one thing I will be, I would definitely have to be careful talking on is talking on defence capability. Um, but yeah, to it, to it, to it, to it, most people understand and know, you know, like we are a small defence force. Mm. We have, uh, being a country that is more left-leaning and is a little more green, we do have a, a smaller or tighter defence budget than most. You know, mm. I think ours, I could be horrendously wrong, but I think our defence spend might be like 1% or 2% of all government spending. Um, and then to a country like America, again, I could be wrong, but I remember at, at least at one stage reading um, 60%. Um, you know, so like if we're going to an operational theatre and you're talking about getting uh, casi vac if you're talking about air support assets, if you're talking about vehicles, ammunition, supply lines, supply routes, um, all that stuff, it's American. Yeah. You have to mind the knocking. They've now just put mirrors up there for posing. Oh, and right. sometimes you get people stomping around in high, high heels. High heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Jordan's office space is in a gym, so... Yeah, <laughs> and it's a bodybuilding gym at that, so we get people upstairs stomping around in high heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, was Afghanistan a like UN effort or like each individual NATO NATO yeah. effort? Yeah, or, uh... and and again, to be fair, you know, like there's there's people who could probably talk on this better because when you know when I was heavily involved, I'm talking at the grunt level. Yeah, um, I, I did, did, did some good stuff, and I think I did have a genuine interest more probably than I guess maybe your average grunt. So like you know like might know a little bit more, um, but maybe not. Um, but yeah, so like it was a, a NATO-led effort. Mm. Um, and I believe we're all part of Operation Enduring Freedom, <laughs> which is essentially to, to liberate Afghanistan from the Taliban control. Yeah. 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 Which it's, is a really interesting story in itself if you look at how that all came to fruition as well. Uh -huh. So what's the comms like? Like you said, you guys have cleared an area, got the drop zone ready, and then the US come through and throw food at you <laughs> what's the comms like for that you need interpreters <laughs> yeah yeah like it is a shit show yeah you know like literally i remember we had this one pallet coming in and we're talking pallets of like rice cooking oil like we're talking bulk yeah and so we've got these pallets hurtling towards the ground they do have parachutes on them but like they're not going slowly you know like and these people just see this you know the locals see the stuff coming from the sky and they're just like you know we're talking these villages they're not connected to the main supply routes these are like we have driven like severely off-road into like back country back country villages of afghanistan and the hundukush mountains like deep in the mountains and so, like, you know, these people haven't seen anything like this probably since the fucking Russians were in there, you know what I mean, like yeah. flying over. And so 
they see these pallets coming towards the earth and like you know there's kids in that like running out into the DZ and we are just like what are you doing you know this pallet's going to like literally it comes out it's going to kill them yeah and so we're like screaming at them and then then we get the interpreters to like pretty much tell them to like get out the fucking way unless you want to die Um, and then that is the next part is chaos yeah because food is falling from the sky (laughs) and you know um, they all want it yeah, absolutely. But so we, you know, we coordinate. You know, it's very different. And then this is like some people um, try. I try to explain to people. You know, when they ask like what Afghanistan was like, I'm like, it's nothing like you can comprehend. Yeah. You know, like here you might go to your local MP and, and, and talk about issues and, and, and funding within a region. There in Afghanistan, like the, the local warlord, he is the MP. <laughs> he is the be all and end all and has the final say. You know, like. So we teed up with a local warlord to come in and make sure like all the different families could could eat given the drop, you know? Yeah. And so they were going bananas. Like everyone's trying to get in there. We've got the interpreters trying to control the situation and that, you know, like and I think this is what we do well as Kiwis, you know, like we don't use any unnecessary force. We try to have like a really good relationship with like, like if they're gonna ransack the food, then they're gonna ransack the food. Mm. Like there's no need to get in there and get heavy handed with them or anything. Um and I think this is why New Zealand, you know, New Zealanders generally do well wherever we go. Um, it's because I think we are very, uh, I guess, empathetic people as well. Mm. Um, but, you know, so we just teed up the local warlord, literally like something out of a movie. Uh, the local warlord comes riding down off the off the hill. And he was like Makarov pistol hanging out. You know, his horse looks like something out of like um, one of those old school Rambo movies with the Afghan warlords and all the rest of it. <laughs> and then literally like as soon as he comes in, like gets off his horse, like, everybody stops fucking with the food like everyone just leaves it alone he you know they're kissing his hand and like it's oh, just like man. something out of a movie mate but then he just gets in there and it's just like cool boom like, you will get that you will get that you will get that we will take this and yeah. he was just like yes so in terms of landscape where you were like you said it's in the, in the mountains and, and it's way out off supply routes and stuff like what's you know, is there any infrastructure or is it literally shacks on a house? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is it is literally like it's it's like going back in time and it is changing. Mm. Like where we were, so the, the New Zealand PRT where we were, um in, in Barmian province and then there's Barmian town itself, like the local bazaar or the local market, like that was developing quite a lot and so we're talking literally like tar sealed roads. Not like here, like mm. it's not like driving down the road here, but like still like um, you know, tar sealed roads, um, and then you know, curbs yeah. like these are all like things that are like modern there, yeah. like a curb, you know, a place for the water to go if, yeah. it, if it rains, <laughs> yeah. And so, but then you're still looking at buildings yeah. that are built from mud, right? Like literally mud huts, you know. Um, but then once you get off the main route, then the road turns to um, essentially like like a pressed dirt road mm-hmm. without the nice metal that we would lay on a, on a rural a rural um, road out, yeah. say, like in, in rural New Zealand. Um, so it'd be like that. Steamrolled, grated, everything, just no metal on top. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, once you get off of that, you are literally talking like the bumpy old goat track. Tricks, yeah. But it's, 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 it's a fucking epic experience, man. It's literally like going back in time, like, like mud huts, communal living, like the entire families in the compound, um, you know, in summertime when winter's inbound, they're literally getting, collecting donkey shit, mixing it with hay, mm. rolling it up, and then pressing it onto the side of the buildings, which then hardens mm. in the sun, and then they pull off these discs, and then they burn them through winter to keep warm. <laughs> you know, like, it is fucking super old school. And we stayed, um, when that DZ drop happened, we stayed with a local warlord. Yeah. And we slept in his lounge, I think it must have been, his living room. Um, and, yeah, when we left the next morning and got back to the FOB, like... Which is what? It's our, our forward operating base. Right. Yeah. Um, sorry, using military acronyms. Yeah, that's good. You know, like, we literally smelt like shit. Like, literal <laughs> shit. Like, after I had a shower and that and smelt my old, the clothes that I had used to sleep in the, yeah. the warlord's house the night before, I was like, wow, that literally smells like shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I also liked it. Yeah. Oh, there's, you know, like after six or seven months, I can't remember how long we were there. Like I was gutted to come home. <laughs> like, and the way I explain it to people too, is like, I know, I know a lot that in this day and age when we talk about mental health, you know, like it's about 
you know, anxiety and depression. It's, you know, like you're either dwelling in the past or you're living in the future and it's yeah. about living in the now. Yeah. Afghanistan, for me, it was, everything was in the now. Yeah. Everything was in the now. You know, like if you're driving down the road, you weren't thinking about, you know, like obviously sometimes you would, but like nine times out of 10, like you're driving along and you're like talking to the boys um, and you're scanning the road, making sure you're like, you don't, if you see any digging, so like IEDs buried under the road and all the rest of it, um, or you're on your on your way to a meeting and then you're in a meeting, you're talking to warlords or Fort Russians and all you're worried about is like the necessities of life, which is literally like, you know, like warmth, shelter, food, and then like the mission for the day. Yeah. And it is such like, your pay's coming in, you've got like no outgoings, so you're just watching your bank account stack when you when you take a look. And then like there's no bills, man. Like you're not worrying about the rego, you're not worrying about the speeding ticket, you're not worrying about clothes or anything because it's all supplied to you. You know, it's like, is my vehicle good to go? Is are my guns good to go? Do we have enough food and water? Cool. What is my task for today? And that is that like I love that kind of stuff. Oh, so what what's what supplies like for you guys that you mentioned food and water? Um, yeah. Like, is there sp- springs or rivers or anything that you guys are able to get into, or is it just like we definitely wouldn't. At, at the base, it's just stacked with yeah, gear. stacked with water bottles, like plastic <laughs> water bottles. Like, yeah, anyone who's a fan of plastic bottles would love Afghanistan. <laughs> oh dear. It is like a river of plastic bottles. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. These, well, these water companies literally like must thrive off water. Right. Like, literally, these water bottle companies like because you got to think every massive American base and then every forward operating base. Mm-hmm. Literally like boxes on boxes of water. Yeah. So like logistics guys, are they going out there with big air trucks and then you guys are coming in with smaller it's all, more, it's, more it's, mobile, mobile it's mainly truck? it's mainly um so the logistics guys will organise it all and, and, and conduct the I guess the logistics operations. Yeah. The planning of the logistics operations, but it's all locals. Right. So we actually do bring a bit of a fair bit of work to the locals as well when we when we are there because oh. obviously road workers like the road workers are the locals and yeah. then so when i first got to afghanistan we punched way south but it's we punch south but you're actually, you're, you're actually heading up in elevation um so the southern part of the province but you're heading up in elevation to like one of the, the highest parts in the province um and so we 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 punched out there and then when winter comes, like we just got hammered by snow to the point like we couldn't get vehicles through. We couldn't even like starting our vehicles to try go out and do something for the day, like go see some locals and see how they're doing and or try conduct a meeting with the local police or whatever it was. Um, you couldn't even get the vehicle started for like half an hour. <laughs> you know, inside the forward operating base, towing the vehicles like up and down around trying to get them to start because it's that fucking cold like negative 20 whatever it is freezing like you go outside and you're like holding your nose because the, the inside of your nostrils are freezing you know like it is baltic mate um and so yeah we we ended up fucking getting pulled out of there out of that part there because the fucking snow was that deep and it was that cold yeah um but we 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 had a point there you know like we've got locals coming out and resupplying us um with food and that you know like it's not kiwis it's yeah. literally these kamaz trucks and i don't know how they have the balls to drive these trucks on these roads <laughs> like even driving a hummer sometimes because something's in a lot of places it's like there's a there's the wall of the mountain mm. there like you can literally open your window and like touch it and then off the side there like literally i'd be driving like that that's a river yeah. you know what i mean so like these kamaz trucks man but like yeah sure enough like out of the treacherous valley comes the Kamaz truck and brings you your food and all your resupply stuff. Yeah, I don't know who I was listening to the other day. Um, had been over there and so he's obsessed with land cruisers now, but he was talking about Iluxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, man, that's awesome to hear that Ilux can like, oh, go to war. <laughs> so, no, 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 literally. There's actually an Instagram page called Toyotas of War. Yeah. Or something like that. And it's literally all these Toyotas over uh, on operations and like literally... I, I know a, a couple of guys at least who after that trip came home and bought a Toyota. Yeah. Literally, they're like, what what further testing could you possibly do? <laughs> like, literally, like we were just balls deep in snow, like digging through snow just like fucking 2 a.m. trying to get back to the main base. Yeah. And these, these vehicles, these Toyotas, they just keep going, bro. No yeah. breakdowns, no nothing. Amazing. Literally. Yeah. yeah. So on that, like with a team like how 
how big can a team be? Like, you, you start thinking like roading, like a like surveyor, like um, roading engineer, a person that can drive machinery, and then you're like, then you need someone to service machinery, then you need someone to service trucks. Like, you know, how how big can a team get before it's just too many bloody people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess it would depend on uh, like the the context of the operation. So, like, if we were looking at um, yeah, it would, it would be, it would, it would be, it would be really dependent on the, on the operation and then capabilities available and all the rest of it. And then, you know, there are essentially like force multipliers and assets and all that. <laughs> yeah. That is one topic I would, I would always be careful of talking about like how many guys we're rolling out the door with yeah. as well, just cause that is like a capability thing. So yeah. Yeah. And so we're mission dependent. Yeah. And then I suppose your area, like you said, engaging with locals is also your relationship it matters as well like, yeah is yeah. it friendly or not <laughs> exactly and then so like you know like say you know, like yeah if we're going to go out say and just do like a security job then we'll just take out essentially our team of infantry and then we've got medics sigs all that stuff you know for, for radio communications um obviously yeah the, the medics are there for enhanced medical support mm. um and then you've got all your fucking your grunts or your killers um all your security uh, not killers, security. Um, <laughs> and then, um, you know, it, it depends what job, you know, we, then we might go out to some place and there's a, there's a, there's a, like I said, there's the road, there's the river, there's a village. That village could probably use a bridge yeah. to get their vehicles back and forth across instead of whatever horrendous route they have to drive to get their vehicles there mm. or wait for the, the river's low or whatever they do. Um, but sometimes they have some extremely sketchy bridges you know, so we might go, okay, cool. We need the engineers to come out. So we'd go out first, probably talk to the village. What do you need? Nine times out of 10, they want a bridge or they want help with fucking supplies to build something to, to help improve their quality of life within the village. And then we're like, cool. And then an engineer call sign will come out with us on the next patrol. Mm. He will do all his surveying and all the rest of it. And then he relays that, relays that back essentially to like an engineering branch within mm. the headquarters element mm. and that's filled with like American civilian contractors mm. and so they take that information and then it goes for funding the funding comes back through um, and then all the materials are delivered to the village and then I believe usually I think that usually they build it themselves or an Afghanistan company generally will come in and, and build it. But yeah, American contractors do, do quite a bit of work too. Mm. Yeah. So I guess it's like, it's, you're basically starting to elevate those hierarchy of needs. Eh? Like it goes like, you know, reach a back and beyond village and it's like, well, we need food supplies, water, better water systems, better housing systems. And then it's kind of like, right, out, we address that. And it's like, how do, how's your connectedness? You know, what's your ability to be mobile, to get access to education and health and all that sort of thing? Yeah. And so are they, did you find that it was like a pretty receptive idea as long as the interaction was friendly? I definitely think so. Like, did they have a broad horizon, do you think? Well... Like obviously, if you're wanting food, yeah, no, food and safety, no, I, then, I, I, then that's I, probably your biggest ideal. <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, like I... I I think it would de it would depend on the person and it would depend on the area you know like so we had some interpreters one of them now lives in and i believe he actually lives up in auckland or hamilton uh a very very well spoken guy his name was was parwes or Pardwes. um and he was like the conversations i had with him were like just as good as the conversation you and i would have yeah. like very deep the meaning of life politics the political underground in afghanistan like the truth behind Afghanistan. Like he was an educated guy yeah. and there, there, you know, there's some, some fantastically educated people um, out of Afghanistan. Um, but I, I do believe, you know, like you're more likely going to get those people when they travel or go to live in, in Kabul, because yeah. obviously it's the city which has a lot of international people, foreign people and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, like essentially like they are no different to you and I, That's right. they yeah. just live a very different life. And so the lens that they see life through, yeah, is different. And like you said, you know, like your, your reality is, 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 or your, no, sorry, like your ideologies are based off your reality. So for them, like their reality is, is every year they literally like fucking Game of Thrones, like winter is coming. Yeah. You know, like literally like winter is coming, like prepare for winter. Yeah. Like they are literally going and finding every twig and fucking berry that they can find to hoard to survive out winter. Yeah. You know? Um, and so 
when you do go and talk to them and you just like, you know, like, what do you want from us? Like, what can we do for you? Essentially, like, they are asking for low level shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it's actually, I think a lot of people could benefit from going there. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. a lot of people like, oh, the government doesn't do this. The government doesn't do that. You know, but it's like, well, cool. You can go to a country where these, you know, the government literally does nothing. Mm. You know, like it's all on them. Like their, their quality of life is all on them. So, you know, like when you do go to them and say like, what can we do to improve your quality of life? Man, they might want like, you know, a bit of money to buy some supplies or they might want to get yeah, a bridge or they might want help with giving the kids something to do. You know, that's beyond the norm. But in the same token, you also have to respect their lifestyle. Yeah. You know, like for some of them, like they literally, they just want to live their life as they're living it. You know what I mean? They want to wake up. They want to pray um, however many times a day they want to pray. They want to live their life um, in order to, to, to please God. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and they do live a, a simple life. And I actually can really appreciate that because my time in Afghanistan, like I said, like I loved it. Yeah. I was like, well... Like Westerners, like we really know how to complicate life. Like we, we do, right? We do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we, 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 we really do. And and I'll even be totally honest. You know, like when I'm when I'm building Warfighter and that, and you go on Instagram and you see some dudes with like a really nice car and that, like fuck, yeah. maybe one day, maybe one day. But then COVID hits, and you know, I'm like, you know what? Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like, how much fun can you get out of driving a nice car? And then you scratch it and then your world ends and all the rest of it. We are like, you know, like you go to Afghanistan, mate, they're, they're, you know, like the village has this beaten up old Toyota van and they all cram in it and whatnot. And like, they're probably more happy than most of the people around here driving around in their brand new cars and their nice house and their swimming pool and the stress of all the stuff we own in the Western world. Yeah. You know, yeah. we want to own all these things. And that's why I think, you know, like fucking hunting is such a, a pure way to live a life as a hunter, you know, and I know there's a lot of people out there in the uh, left-leaning space, which may see hunting differently, but I see hunting as like that hunting, gathering, living off the land, like being out and, and being one and having a relationship with the land. Like that's what they're doing in Afghanistan on the mountain. Mm. It's literally like they are living like life the way that I think humans were meant to live our lives. Mm. And then we complicate it. So you, Afghanistan is this place where it's like, yeah, you go back in time and it's primitive and it's this is that, but like, mate, your stress level is a bloody low. Mm. Even though you do have one overhanging threat, which is not your bills or the police pulling you over speeding and it's getting fucking shot or blown up. Mm-hmm. I personally like, so, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit there stressing about it. You can get fucking run, run over going down the road here. Yeah. You could go, you know, the, the, as we cross the train tracks over here for the gym, <laughs> you know, like the, the bloody, it might, might, it might malfunction yeah. and the fucking warning lights don't go off. I'm listening to some music after a gym session or after a long day here in the office. I don't pay attention. I roll over the train tracks, bang, gone, mm-hmm. you know? So for me, I was like, so what? Mm-hmm. They might try to blow me up. <laughs> yeah, no, I've said it heaps to live my life by that memento more, eh? Like, shit, today's the day. Gotta do it. Yeah. Man. Um, to, how much is the threat of war for those guys? And obviously, like, we're there, states are there creating war, but, like, yeah, is, is their livelihood, are they, were they that worried about their safety prior? Like you said, there's warlords everywhere. So, so the way, the way that I see it, and this is just one man's perspective, mm. you know what I mean? Like, again, it is dependent, just like here. You can go to some, like, swanky place in Auckland, like Ponsonby, mm. and the chances of you seeing, like, a gang member or experiencing, you know, like a shooting or something fucking like a beheading mm. is low. But then like I grew up in Nine Eye, <laughs> Lower Hutt, and in my time as a kid growing up, there were, you know, gang drive bys. Some chick did get her head off, cut off and put in the dryer. You know what I mean? So like this is New Zealand yeah. as well. And even now, you know, we just had a cop, yeah. um, you know, may he rest in peace, just killed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um so so they have, you know, the, I guess it's, it's relative. It's definitely relative to where they are at the time. You know, if we look at um, Afghanistan post-Russia, they now didn't have a common enemy. So what do they do? The warlords battling for power. Zzz, mm. They turn on each other and they fucking level Kabul city. Mm. You know what I mean? So they do fight each other. Um, the way I do explain it is the way in the West, in this day and age, 
um, to solve an issue or a dispute or a disagreement is we'll probably have like a, a social media war. Um, <laughs> and, and it may go beyond social media and we may, you know, fisticuffs, you know, like see YouTube is talking shit and then it ends up in a boxing match or whatever. Um, don't get me wrong, we still have murdering and stuff here, but like I do feel that more so in Afghanistan, if someone has an issue, the AK is coming out. Right. You know what I mean? But that's their way of life. That is their way of life. Um, and so I think if you asked them, like, what is their daily threat, they'd just, inshallah, God willing, you know, they're going to live another day. <laughs> and that's kind of how they roll, bro, which I kind of admire as well. Um, but in the same token, we were out on a patrol. We got word of uh, a murder. <laughs> and so we rolled out. Um, and me and an officer got out of the vehicle and went to track down this mullah or this teacher who had apparently had killed this bloke. Um, took the interpreter with us and then we, we finally found him. And he goes, ah, oh, you guys are here. Oh, I actually want to show you something. And so he wanted to show us something and through the interpreter. We're like, hey, we're actually here to investigate. Uh, we just heard there was a murder. And it was literally the conversation was like this. Like, yes. He's like, me and him had a disagreement, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially... Um, you know, me and him, we had a disagreement. He went and got his gun. I went and got my gun. He's no longer here. <laughs> that was it, bro. And then it was kind of like, even I, me and Tommy were like, oh, yeah, cool. Like, this is their country, bro. That's how they roll. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's no need to, like, what, bring our ideals in them. No, like, yeah. that's okay. I guess that's what happened. You know what I mean? And then he's like, oh, I need you to come check out this water well. And then, like, within five minutes, we're literally checking out this water well. Old mate's funeral's been organised and everybody's, you know, putting that piece together and, like, everything's all good, man. But, like, that's how they just deal, dealt with it. Jeez. You know? Hey, there'd be a few less keyboard warriors in the, in the Western world, mate, if that was how it rolled. <laughs> yeah, if that was literally what you was... Yeah, that's the whole thing about, like, doing it in person, eh? It's like, man, you know, are you serious about this? Or yeah, you, how serious yeah. are you? You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're talking a big game on Instagram, I just want to ask you, how serious are you? You know, because in Afghanistan, they're fucking dead serious, mate. You know, yeah, like, it's know. like, cool, you, you really want to go there, pal? Yeah. Cool, schwack. <laughs> and it's like, like, you know, even goes goes to that, like, what are you, what are you, what are you worried about? You know, are you, are you got food, you got clothes, got a roof, or are you, you know, you worried about your, your mortgage in there? Oh, I've got something on my eye. Yeah. <laughs> um, mortgage and the and the bills that you racked up. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. And and it is it is funny. Like I've, I've been yakking a bit to you about that Aaron Aaron Snyder from Kafaro talking about e- expeditions and mm. yeah. Once you you know out there to well, even one day even even like. <laughs> and now once you leave leave society behind you just to start like I say focusing on the now yeah your bills your your I don't know children your whatever is gone and it's like right what's the what's my next step right yeah. now what's the next hill yeah. the next water break lunch <laughs> it's yeah. Just, yeah, literally what you're worried about or thinking about it just comes right down again to yeah. those like to survival mm. you know yeah. um, or just living just living yeah you know how cool is that? Yeah. I like, I like, I'm the same man. Like, um, you know, with warfighter now, I spend a lot of time in here, mm-hmm. um, in my windowless room. Oh, you're uh, the same as me, man. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> right, exactly. But you know, like when I get outdoors, it's literally just like, wow, I just feel so good. Yeah, yeah. Now, that is the irony of my job, telling everyone to get outside, and I'm sitting in there in a dark cave. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's the same with me, you know. I'm telling people to get after it, and like, yeah. I'm still getting after it, but it's more in a business sense now than, yeah. you know, like go back two years ago and doing, you know, some cool shit. I mean, you've got a, a little bit of, of my ideal in that there's a squat rack just there, you know, every every hour or so you could bust, bust out five reps and. Yeah, I'm and obsessive, though. that's my problem. Give you. I, I, can't, I can't stop for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, might need, I, I need to improve it over now. I'm literally like, when I'm in here, hey, it's just hammer and tong, bro. Like, Close the doors and yeah, get into it. Get, yeah, yeah. get after it. But I do. I'm, I'm I'm getting better at treating myself. Um, and it is good having the gym there. So I just like literally, even though I'm, it's a gym within a gym, mm-hmm. it's still it's it is nice to like at the end of the day sometimes just to still sit in here, and it's almost like active meditation. You know, like still sit there with my own thoughts, with nobody interrupting my thoughts or wanting anything from me, mm. and just being able to get that workout. You know, like it's a place for almost. 
self-reflection or reflection on what I'm working on or what what not, but at the same time, just moving some turn and just, you know, getting those endorphins and the blood flow going from mm. having my ass planted firmly in that fucking chair all day. <laughs> it's a good chair, though. It yeah. is a bloody good chair. It's comfy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty comfy, too. It's even got a cushion. Yeah. Mate, these trinkets, you know, do you sort of look across and, and um, what, what do they do for you? Um, so, yeah, no, this is just kind of some stuff that's been sent in a little bit. Um, and, it, it, yeah, it's just... The room is a bit plain, yeah. And so I kind of wanted to. The idea behind this, this, um, this here was just just have a bunch of stuff on here that kind of represents like myself and I guess the brand and whatnot, yeah. And so like, um, you know, got a bit of gym gear here. Um, got the the MMA gloves here, so a bit of an MMA fan. Yeah. Um, motocross riding dirt bikes. I actually sold my dirt bike <laughs> in my warfighter pursuit. Yeah. Um, at some point in the future, I hope to buy another one because <laughs> um, I actually missed the fuck out of riding. And then Gators is an American, um, I believe, veteran-owned company, uh, eyewear company. They sent me a bunch of kit, and I just thought their cases and stuff looked cool, so I put them on the shelf. Sabre Tactical is another New Zealand veteran-owned company. Um, Wolfwater, obviously, it's my company. Yeah. That is the microphone. Yeah, I thought that was a microphone. Um, a it's a windsock. Yeah, yeah. It's, the old, it's the old, the old <laughs> windsock. That's just sitting there because I was playing with it um, and then yeah had uh, police officers send some stuff in vet ward is an american company um and, and they do a lot of work around you know bringing attention to veterans and getting them moving out and doing fitness again which obviously ties in and 22 is the the number embroidered on the patch there i think yeah. a, a day american oh, right, yeah. 22 veterans a day to suicide you know so mm-hmm. um they sent that over because we've done a little bit of work together so fucking really like what that company's doing um, and then this here was sent from a guy out of Germany, um, and he's a medic, and I thought it was a pretty cool patch. But most of my actual like military swag, that stuff, people would actually probably want to look at, like, I don't know, Navy SEAL coins and like, Delta Force coins or whatever, like, come, uh, you know, units I've worked with over the years, that shit's all at home. Mm-hmm. All my medals and stuff, that shit's all at home. Um, and then, yeah, books, knowledge is power. Um, I've read a bunch of the stuff down there, but it's kind of, again, it's kind of just a... Kind of just a good look. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, mate. So, like, how do you how do you digest books? You read them, or I'm I'm in I'm in uh, I'm in, I'm a phase guy, eh? So like, yeah. I'm either hot on it, yeah. and I can't put the book down, or I start reading it, and I'm like, no, nah, can't do it right can't now. Can't do it right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's some books, yeah, and there's, there's actually a good mix there between, I guess, um, oh, that's a book I actually need to read. Mm-hmm. Um, that's good, it's reminding me. So there's actually a mix there now of, yeah, military and business, I guess, and mindset stuff as well. But yeah, for me, for me, I think reading it's again, it's just, a, it's just tapping into another, a, another different thought process, getting a, a new way of thinking about something. Because um, often I find, you know, some of these books, you read them and you think like, I kind of already knew that, but I didn't think about it like that. Yeah. Or yeah, the, the the messaging, the way it's told, it finally gets you to take action. You know, yeah. like yeah. we all we all hear and see the stuff that we know we need to take action on in our lives, but until it's in the right format at the right time and it's the right message, we don't listen to it. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you know, like definitely, I think I think reading is a it's a fucking powerful tool eh, and worth and worth investing in. But at the moment, like I used to be, I grew as a kid. I was an obsessive reader, like mm-hmm. Harry Potter. Like yeah, I was good. Eh? Pole, that like, got me in. That got me into reading again. Eh? I, I remember yeah. getting the first one for Christmas from Santa. I'm like, oh bloody hell, a book! Like, what? What is this? And I must have had a lot, long. Like, where we go camping in Wanaka, there's nothing to do basically. Yeah. And so I jumped into the tent and I was like, I'll give this book a go. And I yeah. think I finished it in like five days. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It is good. Eh? But I'm, I'm kind of in two minds eh, now. Like, I feel. In the past, if I got a book, just because I bought it, I feel obliged to read it. Yeah. But now, and it's not to shit on the book or to say anything bad about it, but Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Yeah. I think he waffles. Yeah, right. And I now, I like, and again, I think it's just a phase I'm at in my life. I think there's definitely like people out there, probably a fuckload more intellectual than I am. Yeah. Who like the depth of the way he goes about explaining things. Yeah. But I read I read his first chapter, and it was it was a good chapter. Um, I actually probably couldn't tell you the topic of the chapter now, so it was that good. No, <laughs> I remember reading it and thought, thinking this is really good. But he uses he uses the analogy and talks about um, 
lobsters and the way that they yeah. interact and all the rest of it. Um, and I thought it was really good, but then it kept going yeah. and it kept going and it kept going and it kept going. I was like, dude, like get to the fucking point, you know, um, where I feel like now I'm in a phase of my life where I'm like, if I'm not getting value from it, I'm just not going to read it. It's almost why I haven't read 12 rules for, for life. I think, um, it's too in depth. Yeah. I think like listening to him in Jaragon are much, you basically get the cliff notes and what he's about. And I've watched a number of his talks on YouTube and things like that. And I sort of, you know, and I'm, and I'm probably wrong, but if I feel that the purpose of what he's saying comes across really well when he's, when he's, he's saying, talking it, yeah. he's talking it. And I almost feel like stepping into the book is, is kind of like, if this is the first book you're reading on how to bloody move forward in life and get yourself up, well then, you need to get some context and framing and, and proof around it. And, you know, you get to go, like, for example, uses the lobster, like the evolutionary biology approach of like, you know, realistically we are an animal and these are our motivations and this mm. is how, this is how our motivational system works. You know, here's an understanding of that. So then when you find yourself going for those pleasure hits, the dopamine hits, you can yeah. sort of catch yourself out and go, and all the rest yeah, of it, yeah, yeah. Then like, that's why, like, don't, don't, don't feel shit about yourself. Just recognize that, Hey, I've fallen into that dopamine trap. You know, it's the same when you're yeah. s- sitting on Instagram flicking through the stories and you've watched all the stories and you're starting flicking through all the photos and you're like, what am I doing? You are literally yeah. fishing for that yeah. dopamine today. Yeah. And it's like, right, let's let's go do some life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think yeah, I think there is definitely power in understanding. Yeah. Like you said. But I I'm, I agree with you now. I think in this day and age there's so many different ways to consume information. It's even the same for um, David Goggins' book. Yeah, I haven't like, read that either. No, I, I love David Goggins. Yeah. I absolutely love David Goggins and what he's about. Um, he's done some phenomenal speeches. I'll listen to his podcasts or interviews that he's done or YouTube videos whilst running on a treadmill. Mm. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, when I started hooking into his book, again, like I feel like there's some periods there where I'm like... But, I think for me, it's not the book, it's not the author, it's not the way it's written. I think for me, I am now, you know, I am a, a father yeah. and a business owner and I'm trying to get my own fucking gym training in at the same time. And you've been and, through special forces already. As, but yeah, but as, as well. As, and, the, and the thing is, I'm never like, oh, I've been through the pipeline, I don't need that shit. I still, I love to learn from people, yeah. you know, like, I listen to David Goggins and think, fucking wow, yeah. you know, like, I can, I, can t- I can take stuff from that. Like, I'm yeah. not perfect, I don't have it all figured out. But at the same time, (laughs) I am fucking obsessed with my business too. So I'm like, cool. Like there was, um, certain parts of David's book that I was like, this is fucking epic. Mm. Um, so I actually, I do recommend it. I've listened, but I've listened to it, Mm -hmm. which is handy. Um, because I can sit here listening to it whilst working, but there was one part where I was mowing the lawns. Um, (laughs) and that's where I decided to get it in. You know, I was sitting there mowing the lawns. Um, and I thought, fuck, I'll start on his book. But for me, for David Collins was because I had a shit start to life. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a bit of bipolar. Like I do have good memories. Like it's not all bad, um, but you know, like I do have some fucking dark memories as well. Some real dark shit. And you know, I, it's again, I'm always a fa- I'm a fan on perspective. You know, like something. Oh, my life's so hard, and I'm like, well, let's put it into perspective, man. Yeah. Like shit, like life's good, man. Like yeah. life's good. It's yeah. good to fight for things, but life is good. And so, like you know, listening to David Goggins' book, I'm like, my fucking childhood was a fairy tale. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like my childhood was a fairy tale. Yeah. And if anyone wants to hear that, like they should just go into your podcast or you know, the podcast you did with Dave. Yeah. Like, you know, hearing about hearing about your upbringing and it's like I say from my perspective I'm like man, i I'm so lucky so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's cool. Yeah. I love that. You know what I mean? Like I'm not resentful. Like when I see people and they're like, I've got an awesome relationship with my mum and dad, mm. I'm like, I'm so happy for you. Like I don't I don't know what that feels like. Awesome. But like I'm stoked for you that you have that. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think that's also a cool thing too, because it comes down again, once again to like, which is another thing I love about David Goggins, which is about like, it's not poor me. You mm. know what I mean? Like when he's telling his story, it's not like, Oh, poor David, pat his little head. He's like, no, fuck no. It's like, yeah, I came from that fucked up past. I made these mistakes. I was this person. I did have a shitty childhood, but this is who I am today. Mm. I wasn't born this way. Mm. And you know, and that's, and that's the same thing with me. Like I'm not telling you like about getting my fucking head bounced off the walls and you know or posting you know the house that i grew up in for you to go oh poor little fitzy it's like no no no. it's like what i'm trying to say is like if i can come from that fucking mm-hmm. shithole mm-hmm. if i can come through that adversity and be not a bad dude 
and be doing some pretty cool stuff, some pretty exciting stuff in life, then so can you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, all I hope is like, whether it's a dude in a midlife crisis in search of meaning, or whether it's, you know, like a little Fitzy, <laughs> you know, like he's out there and, you know, he fucking loves his mom and he loves his family, but you know, like from time to time, she's like bouncing his head off the walls and he, can't, he, he can't understand it. You know what I mean? Like this is the person who brought him into the world and he's fucking sitting there and his ears are ringing and his face is numb and he's just like, what's that about? Like, why am I getting this like hiding? Like what, yeah. is, like, what is this about? Like, and when the fuck do I get a break? And then he can look, you know what I mean? He can look and go like that dude was there. Yeah. He got through it and now he's his own person. And he's this fucking man and he has values and he stands for something, you know, like well, that's at least what I hope, yeah. you know, people can get from it. So yeah, yeah just to caveat that, yeah, it's not like some, oh, poor Fitzy, you know. I, th- I think that's like, you know, people bag on social media and stuff and, or, you know, they talk, you know, it's like most things, people talk about the negative side of things. It's like most things are good and bad at the same time. That's the yeah. that concept of yin and yang and, and karma and all that sort of thing. It's all the same bloody thing. Yeah. That like, there's good and bad and it's going too hard and stuff and there's being lazy and you know all, all of that stuff is involved in that and like but from my perspective if you can curate what you're looking at mm. um it's a it's a um elliot holtz thing and i'm sure he nicked it from somebody else um <laughs> it's, it's like what are you brainwashing yourself with yes yeah and so that's what i hope with this podcast is like gives examples to people to like prove it to yourself and like same with like david goggins you know and Cam Haynes, it's like when I was talking mm. to someone the other day about. I love Cam Haynes. Yeah, he's, he's a champ. I was talking to somebody the other day about this this ultra, and I was like, well, I'm not the first bloody person to do an ultra marathon. Yeah. You know, it, can, done it, it can be done. Yeah. And it's this, it's the same same how I've been sort of looking at, um, you know, separating from my partner and, and being away from my daughter. So I'm not the first person that that's happened to. You know, yeah. that's, that's on that pretty shit too. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. But like, and, and I'm, I'm always, you know, I'm always lucky, but. I'm lucky that I have some really epic guys in my life that yeah. have been through all that and I've been able to talk to them about it and see that they're doing the best that they possibly can and, and from the outside looking at it, it seems to be a good job. Like, you know, Yana with Justin last night, it's, you know, like, it, it, it's hard. It's like, but like, all of life is hard. Life even, is hard. Even in a relationship, life is hard, you know. Yeah, there, there's, well, there's, it's a compromise, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and so like, you know, you can look around the world so easily now to prove to yourself that you can do it. Exactly, yeah. You know? and, and, and of course, there's, there's survivorship bias of, of everything, you know, the, the ones that do succeed is who you see. But at the same time, you know, there's that saying, if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? So yeah, like, absolutely, bro. Then just, like, get out and do it. And, you know, that, that must be some of the stuff that you've gone through, like leaving the safety of, of Korea to go and do it but it's like well what 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 can't it be me to do it yeah <laughs> that's exactly right bro you know um and i think from a new, new zealand perspective too you know like i think we see a lot of americans in this space mm-hmm. uh, a lot of veteran owned companies and putting a, a specific message out there or putting their own personal message out there with that military veteran flavor mm. um and i think like realistically like in terms of new zealand i'm kind of the first guy to do it but again it was like if not me then who mm. you know what i mean like why do we have to go through this entire career, give our fucking lives, you know, like, so I've given my life to this army, to this country since 17 years old. Mm, mm. Like, why not use some of my experiences to help change, help impact other people's lives, motivate, maybe inspire other lives at the cost of telling my story? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's my story. No one gave it to me. No. We're like, up until now, yeah, we almost have had that thing of like, oh, we don't do that. Yeah. But then now it's like, you know, people can look and go, well, fuck, actually. Why, fit, why can't we do it? A Fitzy can do it. Yeah. I, mean, I can do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, this fucking idiot can do it. <laughs> there was a little crack up, like, talking to um, uh, Mike from Radix, how being in Pom coming here. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mike. Uh, Englishman coming here. <laughs> <laughs> You're a <Bobby> bastard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Englishman coming here. And, and he's just saying, I do not get this. Um, Tall poppy syndrome. Is that right? I don't understand it. And like, you know, obviously you got a bit worked up about um, Izzy the other day, but on the whole, yeah, he's an awesome, awesome dude. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, and, and that's the same thing that he said at the Halberg. And it's like bloody awesome. It's like, why, why are we as a country, you know, got this Halberg award, but then um, the moment we see anybody do achieve something, we at the same time cut them down. It's like this 
is this big oxymoron like we'll give you the award or you'll win the gold or you'll win the world cup but no you're a dick you know like, oh yeah what's as he's had it bad too man and he like the, the reason why I have been a fan of his for so long is because he breaks the mould mm. of like a New Zealander which is like yeah yeah no, we did alright on the game and, you know <laughs> full like, credit like, full credit you know from the team uh, you know like and, and to me, like I think, I think some of it is a good portion of it is it's like fake humility, it's yeah. fake humbleness. Because yeah. on the inside, they think they're the fucking man. You know what I mean? And then it's a bit of, at the same time, it's just like, why can't we be happy that we achieve something? Mm. But mm. in the same token, even I've I've experienced it. You know, like through the grapevine and through the rumor mill. You know, like when I was building Warfighter up and we're starting to be a success. Like I had haters, bro, from mm. within this tiny special operations community. Mm. Like there were dudes fucking, you know, shitting on, oh, what's that about? And again, instead of going, oh, well, Fitzy's really building this platform to impact people and to motivate people and to inspire people. It's like, oh, it's all about me talking about myself. Mm. Mm. And he's fucking promoting himself. And this is like, you're not even listening. You're not <laughs> listening to what I'm saying. You're just seeing what you want to see and you're, and you're hearing what you want to hear. Yeah. You're not actually looking at what we're doing. Yeah. It's about fucking inspiring other people through telling our story, about telling about our success. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because that motivates and inspires people. But also talking about failure and having the humility to talk about failures of, you know, failing special operations selection and all the things that I've failed at during in, in my time. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the story that we're telling. But again, New Zealand, it does, I think New Zealand has a long way to go yeah. with embracing people um, who are successful and for embracing people who are also confident, mm. you know, like, because... Mm. For so long, probably up into the last few years, like I have always been an extrovert. Like when I think back to being a kid, mm. you know, like I was a real social kid. I loved, you know, reenacting movies and taking the piss and mm. like having a laugh with people and like being a little loud and, um, you know, getting in trouble in class and whatnot. Um, and then it, it definitely in the military has a long way to go. <laughs> like literally, like... So after joining the army, like at 17 years old, like especially the New Zealand army is the worst, man. Um, <laughs> it really is. It has the worst, like, at make, and making you believe that being an extrovert is bad. Right. Literally, for the last few years, I have always thought, like, being an extrovert, like me being an extrovert is a bad thing. It's a weakness of mine. I've always thought that. Yeah. Up until the last few years, when I've started listening to guys like Gary Vee. Yeah. You know, because even special operations, it's like, oh, the grey man, the grey man, the grey man. And then you get to special operations, you're like, what fucking grey man? It's all just like <laughs> alpha males, it's like fucking, yeah. on the burst. No, nah, it's not, but it, it's like, it's alpha males and it's so competitive, which is great. And it makes a phenomenal environment. But then there's this narrative told about the grey man. Yeah. And I'm like, the grey man's like, incongruent. The, it's like the 5%. Yeah. You know, like 5% of the dudes in the unit are grey men. The rest of them are like fucking testosterone fueled alpha males and everybody wants to be the champ. Yeah. You know, which is good because that literally drives the pursuit of excellence. Yeah. So, you know, you're on the range with the boys. It's like, who's faster? Who's more accurate? You're in PT. Who's fitter, faster, stronger? Who can go longer? Yeah. All those things. So it's, it's great for culture. But then, yeah, again, you know, like, it's like the messaging is kind of like, oh, if you're an extrovert, you might want to pipe down. But now down. I see my, you know, extroversion as a fucking strength. Mm. It's a strength of mine because I have the confidence to get up in front of people mm. and, and, and talk, you know. Um, and I guess that's probably where I actually did start to realize it was a strength was when I was starting to get, get given a lot of training roles mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and training guys and, and giving speeches and giving talks on, on certain things. It was like, cool. And the reason why I'm comfortable is because I am an extrovert. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing. It's a mm -hmm. fucking good thing because mm -hmm. I can get up here and confidently talk and professionally represent my team. Mm -hmm. You know, so but yeah, definitely in New Zealand, long way to go. Yeah, so on that um, like extroversion, I, I, especially since doing this podcast, I keep going back and checking. And like, am I still extroverted? Yeah, I did it the other day. Still extroverted. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but um, yeah, like obviously, as you just brought it up there, working with teams and stuff, that means that you've got to really. It's it's a fine balance between leading and running away with it, and then being um, observant and open. Yeah. To to the response of, of of the message you're putting out there, you know, you can get caught up in the um, here we go team, follow me. Yeah. And someone out the back being like, "What about this way?" 
and and you don't have them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so like we, where I'm where I'm going with this is right now you sole charge and you contract to people and you contract to people like Jimmy who's an introvert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which has been a great experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because he's creative also. So. Oh, he's amazing, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then like moving forward, you know. If this goes how it get, should go, mm. then it's going to be into that team team environment. So how do you? And it's danger close. Yeah, there are days where I'm fucking drowning, yeah. like literal, <laughs> literally drowning. Yeah. Like all I have orders coming out of that machine. Like yeah. Oh, it's sore after COVID when the yeah, yeah, yeah. And stuff. It was like you were printing off reels, mate. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need more labels. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> but um, how do you sort of approach management? Like, and, yeah. and obviously in, in teams, you you have to do a bit of it. But yeah, how, how where's your mindset at right now in terms of management? Yeah, no, the the, the cool thing is was um, I got to work in, in some really cool small teams. Yeah, um, and you would almost think that being in a small team, um, you know, it would make leadership. They talk about small, so you think about like a big infantry. You think like about a big infantry platoon. Mm. It's kind of what the platoon sergeant says goes mm. yeah you know and you think like oh you're in a small team if you're a team leader you're only you're managing less people so it must be easier mm-hmm. but what you actually get in small teams is more opinions and more ideas and stronger personalities yeah. because we can sit in a, in a circle like this and we're planning a mission or we're planning a course of action or whatever um and you've got thinking soldiers you've got thinking men this is the challenge of special operations um and sometimes when it's your turn to lead, mm-hmm. you do get to the point where you're just like, can you just shut the fuck up and just roll with my plan for once, bro? <laughs> Man, stop questioning, stop questioning it. <laughs> I can roll with it. Um, no, but I've, I've had a lot of cool experiences where, you know, have been given the opportunity to to lead yeah. um, and to lead alpha males. And then I've also been given the opportunity to go back on my junior leadership course, which the New Zealand Army does really well, um, which is developing junior leaders a lot of time and effort go it goes into our junior leaders and leadership courses compared to that of the likes of like America and that like ours as courses are substantially long um, and I thought the training was was, was pretty good um, and so I got the opportunity to go back for, and re uh, lead regular force soldiers mm-hmm. um, of all walks of life and I tell you what going and leading an entire syndicate on a task on my junior NCOs course was fucking easy. You know, like I ask guys if, if they could do something and they're like, yes. And um, give them the opportunity to, pr- to provide any thoughts, feelings, opinions into the plan and they give it to you and then they just leave it. Right. We're well, like in special operations, it's like, oh bro, what do you reckon? And then it just becomes this like overbearing thing and it's like, if you could just stop giving me your opinion now, it would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Paralysis by analysis. Yeah, so you know, I, I think my, my approach to, so yeah, um, probably a fucking long-winded answer, but my, no, my, my approach to leadership. It's a podcast, man. Yeah, <laughs> we yarn. <laughs> and if anyone who knows me, they know I love a fucking good yarn. Um, yarnzilla.com. No, but in saying that, my approach, to, my approach to leadership is quite modern. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I do, I do have a strong personality. Yeah. But at the same time, I do. Th- I, I think, especially in this realm here, yeah. where it's business, like I'm humble enough to know that I don't know everything, mm-hmm. and I don't have it all figured out, and I don't have the answers, and that I need to be open. Um, and I've seen leadership done in the army many different ways, mm-hmm. and I know how I respond. And so, for me, there's micromanagement, mm-hmm. and there's just like letting people go and surprise you. Yeah, yeah, what's, it, the, what's the term that Taco uses? Like distributed leadership or something like that? Um, I don't know. No, no. That's, yeah. Go listen to any Jocko podcast. Yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. Hear it. <laughs> Jocko, like the way, so like, essentially how like Jocko Willing talks. Yeah, is, 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 that's I think where you want to be. Yeah. It's giving people the free reign to take ownership of the task. Yeah. Instead of sitting there micromanaging. Mm. Oh, where you're at, what are you doing? Where you're at, what are you doing? So yeah, my, I'm actually really looking forward to building a team. One, to grow myself as a leader uh, and building a team. Because leadership, it is a fucking hard skill. Mm. Like I know some fantastic leaders who, if they just let go a little more, if they just chill on the micromanaging, they would be good. Mm. Because in other areas, you know, that, that, that genuinely empathetic that you have a life outside of this career, outside mm. of this job, and they want to know about that. Mm. Um, this is my last leader, fantastic guy, you know, like really personable. Um, 
he would make plans, he'd be conducting courses of actions and all sorts of stuff, and he would ask for your input. You were part of the plan, you developed the plan, he took on board your feedback. But he was also strong enough to go, mm, I don't agree with what you're saying, and this is why. Yeah. And then he would let you have the rebuttal at the same time. And then he'd be like, right, cool, go do that. But his one fault would be the micromanaging of your time. Mm. After How that. you going with that? How, How you going, going with that? that? How you going with that? And then you're like, cool, I'm done. And then you'd question that if, if you really are done. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. was one downfall. But no, I've had some really good leaders. Now, he was one of them. Mm. Um, I guess he was the first leader that I ever had that I really saw um, empathy become the strength. Mm -hmm. Like he really cared about you as a person. Mm. Up until that point in the army, you know, like it was quite, quite like the abusive father style of leadership. You were the number. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or two, or like the bro. Mm -hmm. All like right. Two yeah. bro. You yeah. know, like, oh, bro, do you mind doing this? It's like, bro, you can just tell me to go do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you are my fucking leader. Passive aggressive type yeah. of thing. Well, not aggressive, but yeah. But just like mm. extremely passive. Mm. Like, do you mind doing this? It's like, bro, it's my job. Like, I'll go do it. You know, <laughs> just tell me to do it. You know, it was too nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, I've, I've, I've struck that a little um, at work. Um, I guess it's because I have this sort of in between role. Like, I'm an optometrist, but I'm not a director. And then some people come to me and like, oh, what do you mind? And I'm like, so, of course, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Chuck them in there. Book them, book, you know, enter the numbers, I'll see the person. Yeah. Start. It's like, yeah, let's, let's roll, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 good, good, yeah. good. Uh, um, so where, where have you gone in terms of the nuts and bolts of business like accounting and, and taxes and, and, and incorporating and all those you know you look at starting a business and you're like man that's a lot of things to do first and we haven't we're not selling any, we're not selling anything yet <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> this is a topic I actually fucking love talking about now yeah. I um, it's funny I've still, I've still obviously got my passion for the, for the, like, the military and, and, and the fitness side and all of it but like actual like nuts and bolts business is it's I love because I think it's a new challenge mm. it's something new there's a, a lot of things I don't know but I enjoy learning it mm. and so I guess again someone physically doing helping you with that or just essentially Google <laughs> no yeah no 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 essentially it's literally YouTube yeah, yeah it's <laughs> YouTube it's podcasts it's literally that yeah. you know what I mean like we are so lucky in this day and age like when I first started Warfighter, I had the idea for Warfighter and I knew where I wanted to go with it. I just started the Instagram page mm -hmm. because I think in 2020 and 2019, when I started in 2017, at the end of 2017, was like first things first. It's like you need to build a community around your ideas, your values, mm -hmm. um, and, and the ideology of your brand, right? Do you know a thousand true fans? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And that's yeah. what it's about, right? Yeah. Um, and so at the same time, I was like, cool, I'm going to start the social media I don't thing. know who made that up, by the way. <laughs> no, it's in a Tim Ferriss book. Yeah, it's in Tools of Titans. Yeah, that's right. It's, and it's not Nepal oh. Rubber Camp. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll look that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where was I? Learning. learning. Yeah, so, oh, no, get, get you know, so, so we just started. So, yeah, and that, that, that in itself is an experience of, like, fucking humor and humility because you you see, you know, I was talking to my mate, Rory, who runs Hard to Kill Fitness, and he was really helpful in the beginning stages. And so I was, you know, talking to him. It was interesting because I had this idea before even knowing what Hard to Kill Fitness was, let alone the fact that he ran it. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Got the same idea. Got the same idea. Synergy. <laughs> yeah, but he's a, he's a, he's a phenomenal bloke. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he's been fucking awesome. And he's like, look, man, the market's wide open, you know. There's more than one brand out there. How good you is know? that? Like no feminine mindset. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and no, no, no feeling of threat. No, like oh no, nah, bro, I'm already doing that. Can you steer away? Like none of that gay shit that I <laughs> see people. I see people doing it now, mate. Fucking gay. Um, and so I started building that. Put a post up. Yeah. First ever post. <laughs> no likes. No likes. Do another post. <laughs> One like, two like. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, people it's sit there. 200 percent great. Like, yeah. <laughs> people sit there and go, oh, fancy, you know, your, your social media is fucking growing so much. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 200 percent like, great. For a second post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you've got to go back to those early days. Like, I was willing to suck for a fucking long time, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and our content's come a long way. But so, what I did was I just built the community. Yeah. And then, as I was building the community, I literally just lived on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I would be on Shopify yep. building the website or fucking 
product design or graphic design or talking to yeah, my sister in law at the time was helping with graphic design and all the rest of the stuff that we're doing, talking to um, my business partner in the beginning who did all the training programs and stuff, mm. talking to him, doing all that stuff. Anyway, I'm like, be building the websites like midnight, whatever, and it's just Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. Just on replay, just like literally video after video after video. And so I just listened to him, what he was saying about attention. And then, you know, like you, you go speak to somebody, um, and I touched base with this guy in America, you know, and he's like, oh, do you have a logo? I'm like, yes. And he's like, is it registered as a trademark? I'm like, no. He's like, cool, you need to go do that. Yeah. And so it's just, you, the pieces just start to fall in. And the, I think the honest truth is, is like some people sit there and like, oh, you've got to have a business plan, you've got to have this, and you've got to have that. I'm like, no, you don't. No. Like, um, I've read that's fabric, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 read, I've, read a, I've read a portion of um, Lean Startup, mm-hmm. and I reckon that's the way to go. And it's about because I, I, I know a lot of people they want to start their business with everything perfect, and it's just like, trust me now, it fucking never will be. Mm. And you will always see an improvement, you know what I mean? You always see something that needs to be fixed, something that can be improved. I see it every day of my life now. Oh, we need to improve that. Oh, we need to improve that. Man, I want to make that better. Man, I want to take that to the next level. And you can only do one thing at a time or a couple of things at a time. Mm. And so for me, it just started building. And it's like, okay, cool. We need to register as a business. And so it's like, how do I do that? How to register as a business in New Zealand? Go on the company's website. I did it wrong the other day. Yeah, did you? <laughs> yeah, I um, tried to do that, but I didn't do the check part first, so I wasted 15 bucks. I was gutted. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice, <laughs> Like, nice. you know, you can't use that name. It already exists. I was like, oh, damn, I thought this part was the free bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so that's, another, that's another part, eh? It's yeah, literally like, a name. Check, check the name, then register the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't gone back and made up a new name, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I was uh, what's better, what is it? Twice shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. No, that's, yeah. Unimportant for me at the moment. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I guess my advice to people is like, if you're going to start a business, do something that you give a fuck about. Hmm. You know, start building an audience and a community. And instead of just like thinking about how you can transact from them or have some sort of transactional relationship, this is what I got from Gary Vee. Hmm. And he's always my North Star. If I'm ever lost, I put on Gary Vee. And I'm like, that's right. I need to provide value. Mm. And so like, that's my other thing is like, you know, like do something you, you actually give a fuck about, something you're passionate about, build a community around it using so- social media platforms that are out there and available. If you don't, you will fucking suck. Like you need social media, no matter what your opinions are. I didn't even have social media. Mm-hmm. I deleted it all. And then I started building it back. Mm. Um, and then the, ne- and the third thing is just like provide fucking value. Like what can I do for these people? To help them with whatever they that what it is that they need, they need like what I think they need you know so for me looking at like the military fitness market people interested in you know it's training you know some of them don't have money mm. and so like I'm going to give free workouts I'm going to give free training programs I'm going to write blogs on how to improve your pull ups I'm going to write blogs on how to improve your run times I'm going to reach out to guys who have been to a ranger school and ask them to write a blog on how they prepared for ranger school mm-hmm. just constant value like what can I do for these guys um, and it can just be entertainment as well like putting up a funny video, like giving mm-hmm. them something to laugh at, Yeah, you know? But that helps build your community over time. And then, yeah, along the way, obviously, you know, like you're going to need your ones, ones and zeros. Mm. But like, I just did shitty accounting for so long. And then now, we're at the point now where it's like, okay, cool. Like accounting matters. Mm. And I understand that now. I didn't, I didn't used to understand that. You know, I was like, I'll just keep selling shit. Like, who cares about the numbers? Like, Am I selling shit? Yes, cool. We're good. You know? Um, As I heard, heard the other day, yeah. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to business, if you're uh, getting more money in than what's going out, then you've got a successful business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that's not bad logic. That's not bad it's like, logic. It's amazing how many people don't don't uh, take that one into account. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the thing too. There's, there are a lot of businesses that run in a massive deficit. Yeah. You know, and, and people don't understand that. Um, but that, that's part of growing a business, right? Um, so yeah, that's how I used to roll. But then now, because we've got so much... Um, so many sales going in and out and we're always buying new stock and I've got samples and prototypes now that we're getting into the, mm. the high end gear and we're running all the developing stuff and I'm just on my mind is on too many different things because mm-hmm. essentially I've got contractors like you said yeah. but I have no like employees here with me yeah. I've got the team out in the US which are like uh, they are massive you know like they save me a lot of work and time and they get our US orders out there mm. nice and fast um, and fixing the issues for us on the northern hemisphere side of the house. I take care of all the shipping for New Zealand and Australia down here. 
But then like up until recently, you know, like the marketing, the branding, the accounting, all of that, I did it all. Hmm. But then now, slowly but surely, it's but it's good, right? Because I now understand each role and I, I have, in, have invested in courses and in training on how to run successful Facebook ads, hmm. how to write good ad copy, how to do Facebook targeting, all these skills I never had that hmm. I now have. Hmm. And the beautiful thing is, is like even if Warfighter died tomorrow, those skills are with me for life now, yes, yes. you know? So, and the good thing is now is I can run Facebook ads and I've now just started working with a New Zealand marketing team. And to give context to that, I've last year, I would have burned 20 grand US, 20,000 US dollars on using two marketing companies that sucked. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. I spent 20 grand and it's gone. That's what I mean. Like, this is a whole new fear, like conquering fear, new challenges. Like, I know in the beginning, like that sort of money, that would give me a fucking heart attack. Yeah. And now I'm just like, cool, that sucked. I learned a lot. Let's move on. You know, but then now, because I've invested, because I've been through bad marketing, through shitty companies, I'm now with this New Zealand company that's phenomenal. They use performance-based results. So yeah. they make money when they make you money. Good. If they don't make you money, they don't make money, um, which is actually, it is revolutionary. Like other companies don't do that. Um, and so now when they report back to me, I know what shit, mm. you know? So if they're telling me numbers, whether it's a ROAS or fucking uh, ROI, so return on investment mm. or return on ad spend, or they're talking, um, you know, clicks and they're talking fucking purchases and all the rest of it, I know if it's good. Yeah, if it's worth it. And I know if it sucks. And if they give me, you know, if they show me an ad that they're going to launch and I see the picture and I see the text and yep. I'm like, nah, that picture sucks. Get rid of it. Mm. You know, if I didn't do all of the, all of the jobs, I wouldn't be able to coach people to be better at it, mm. um, especially for my brand and my messaging, right? So now we do have a marketing team helping out, but the beautiful thing about doing it all is I know. Um, the other thing too was like, I did a little bit of um, the accounting myself and used Xero, mm -hmm. the marketing software, uh, sorry, the accounting software. I now have an understanding of how to use it. The main, most important thing is now, is I understand how to go and look at a P&L, profit, profit and loss sheet, and look at the expenditure. Like where did my biggest, um, you know, where did the most amount of money go out? Mm. And, and, and was it justified? Mm. Um, and, and how can I prove the P&L? You know what I mean? Or like, yeah, the P&L looks like this because of this. And I understand it. But now, I've now given that off to my accountant. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he used to just do my end of year financials and GST returns. And so now he does all my GST returns interview financials and then just reconciliates all my zero stuff at the end of, the end of every month nice. and I can now just go in and check the P&L and then keep pushing forward because I've just got too many other important stuff uh, and roles to, to, to work on and I don't have the time to sit there like reconciliating a receipt yeah. you know when I should be talking to my designer about our fucking camouflage pattern or about you know the new gear that we're making and the materials that we're picking mm. or um, you know, talking to Jimmy about design work, whether it's a new design um, or um, yeah, uh, graphic design work of, of and, and updating and improving our training programs and the layout and the flow of information. Like, it's like actually making our products better, mm. you know, instead of worrying about accounting. Wicked. So I reckon uh, we tell people where to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so warfighterathletic.com yeah. or uh, on Instagram, yeah. warfighter underscore athletic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No Facebook anymore? Uh, Facebook, same thing, Wolf Fight Athletic. Twitter, yeah. Wolf Fight Athletic. Yeah. We are on TikTok, but I'm still trying to figure that shit out. Just dance, mate. Yeah, this thing, I'm not going to dance. Get that weight vest on. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I've, I've committed. We're not dancing. I'm thinking about workouts and, and stuff like that. You should look at this fella, Bud Jeffries. Um, he's a sort of strongman, circus-ish type guy. Circus. From like... In terms of strongman stuff, right? Like, like going, freakishly strong. Yeah, he's got this like two hundred pound stone that he like just spins around in his arms. No wow. worries. Yeah, bounces on one foot, lifting heavy shit. It's, it's main. So that's what he does on his TikTok. Really? <laughs> it's a phenomenal opportunity. Though, I, like, yeah. I see people, people's accounts like a lot of attention. That's a Gary V thing, eh? Yeah. I I have it actually have it an account. You don't? I, no, I do because yeah. I sign up to Musically. I think I made like two two videos on music and like, oh, that was fun <laughs> yeah I think it's just good to get on there and have a dabble and have a try like, yeah. I definitely want to get better at it but that's you know one of the highs I want to make yeah is, 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 is it would be to have like a, a creative yeah uh, again helping out with stuff like that 
Yeah. Because I've got heaps of ideas too about what I could do, but then I need someone to film me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's like, yeah. I've talked talk to a guy in Aussie that committed to that. He seems to, you know, think it's worthwhile. Gary, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he's, probably, he's, he's probably the first person to do it. Yeah. Well, he has like, what, like three videographers who follow him around and yeah. make content and chop it up and. Chop, yeah. yeah. Actually, that was probably like the last Gary V thing I did, which is what motivated me to start clipping more podcasts. Yeah, yeah. I haven't quite got to um, getting subtitles on it because that's part of the thing for Instagram. Most people are watching Instagram on mute. Yeah. So if you can have the podcast uh, subtitles. Sub- subtitles, then they can watch it on mute. Like I've mm. watched a few Russell Brain clips like that, and I was like, oh, yeah, got to get it done. Got to get it done. Got to yeah. learn how again. Got to learn how to like put in subtext that goes across the page. I'm sure there's just a filter on bloody. Oh, I think there's going to be an app. Surely. Yeah, there'll be something. There'll be something. But yeah, no. Yeah, nice. And um, another one is like going through and getting transcripts for Jesus blog. It's going to be a lot of episodes now. It's a big yeah, work. yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a company out there, right? Yeah. yeah. Someone, someone was telling me it's like five bucks a page. I was like, why well, don't have five bucks a page? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. Yeah, just, yeah. How many pages in there yeah. is, is this podcast alone? Yeah. You know, a book, mate. One fifty. Yeah. And then this other thing, someone said, said, write a book. Like, yeah. One day, one day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, um, Tim, oh. Fer- Tim Ferriss did it good, eh? Like, he basically did it, set his podcast up to be coded, and so it's just a simple search function of where did I ask that? Well, have the transcript. Simple search function of the question, and then grab the answer, lay them all out. He probably just had like a room full of post-it notes of, of question and answer for those key questions, and then compiled it into a book. How good are you? I was like, man, it's a genius. Idea. And that's what I reckon too. Yeah. I, I reckon now, almost just sit there, record enough podcasts, and you'll literally be able to transcribe a book out of it. Yeah. You might need to you know, get in there and get a bit more creative with telling a story, like flesh it out. Yeah. But I reckon you'd have, shit, 70%, 80% of the book done. Well, the fact that he, you know, brought Tools of Titans out, and then a year later, he had tribal mentors, and that was just from an email interaction of 150 people, like, for an outstanding book. He, that guy asks good questions. Really? Yeah. Outstanding book. Like, a lot of the same people that were in Tools of Titans are in Tribe of Mentors, but it's just a different perspective, different, like, intelligent question. Yeah. And, and obviously to intelligent people that answer it in fascinating ways that you, yeah. like, never would have thought about. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think Tim Ferriss does some good work, but I, I, I find his ideology behind the four hour week work week repulsive <laughs> i literally do i think it's disgusting and he, he, he's, he's walked back on that big time as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm just like <laughs> you are selling to the lazy bro like, <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, drop, drop shipping is an interesting idea eh? i did read it end of last year you know and like you said a lot of the content in that book is no longer relevant but yeah, the, the, you know, like anything, there's gems. There's gems yeah, there, there's de- there's definitely good stuff in there too, like the whole you know VA system and all the rest of it, virtual you know virtual system that. But I I personally think if you're going to build anything meaningful, yeah, that you genuinely give a fuck about and that you're genuinely passionate about, yeah, like drop shipping and virtual assistants and all this shit, I'm like. That's just turning setting money. up the work to do no work. Yeah, yeah, you're setting up the work to do no work. You don't really give a fuck about the customer, the end user, which then, for me, goes back to the question of like, like, what is your mission here? Like, what is your purpose? And if it is just to make money, um, and then you don't really care about the end customer or the end human yeah. who is separating with money, then I'm like, you need to look at your moral compass. Yeah, some of that Aussie follow that always pops up on YouTube, eh? and it's like, you know, he talks about like the margins on all these you know, doohickeys and widgets. And, um, but then what irks me as well is it's like, you're telling us that these widget drop ships are so successful and you make so much money. Here's you on YouTube trying to sell us instructional courses. And you're like, well, is it actually making you, why why do you need to worry about selling your course? (laughs) That's what I don't get to. And that's where I've been realistically really um, impacted by Gary V2 is like the way Gary's set up is his business makes him the money. Yes. You know what I mean? Obviously, his keynote speeches make him money too, but his business makes him enough and money. And his investing decisions and the fact that his platform's so big that he can try and le- leverage his uh, investment decisions is also quite good. Yeah, it's very good. But <laughs> in, in, in the fact of, like, he can help you and me for free. Yeah. He can do YouTube videos for free. He's not trying to sell you a course. 
yeah. there is no you know like five thousand dollar course with so many of these people there is yeah you know like even if someone is like influential as grant cardone like he gives out some good information on that but on the back end of it he I is, don't know how that is grant cardone is a massive u.s businessman great yeah. personality really extroverted guy full of energy full of life he kicked you know drug addictions and all the rest of it and became like extremely successful nice but same thing again, like I love Grant Cardone, but same time, like if you go to a keynote speech, at the end of it, he's going to try to sell you to one of his business seminars. Right. Where like Gary Vee is like, that like is for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's what I, that's, that's my goal. My goal is to be like, to have Warfighters so successful that I can help people and do things for free. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to charge. Where at one point in time, I was looking at, you know, doing consulting on the site mm -hmm. as well. You know what I mean? Where it was like goal setting mindset, helping people start their own businesses and stuff. But I'm like, nah, I don't want to charge for that shit. Yeah. I just want to do it for free out of the kindness of my heart. Mm. You know, be that role model I never had. And uh, the funny thing is, is literally the other day I got an email and I need to reply to it. Um, was I got an email from uh, a cadet unit, mm -hmm. like literally like, army, like little army cadets that think they're 13 years old. Um, and there's a warrant officer there um, and he's asked me if I could come in and, and do a bit of a speech to these 13 year old cadets. Okay. And I have to say, and, and I said to the missus, I said, I don't know what it is. I said, it's freaking hilarious. I'm like, this is one of the most things I've been excited about in a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm excited about the warfighter stuff and what we're working on, but in terms of like just something with life happening, <laughs> you know, like getting asked to come speak to 13 year old kids, I'm like, Oh, pumped, bro. I'm still pumped. Like, like, I can't wait to go and speak to these young boys and just to go and tell them, you know, like, this is where I was and this is where I am now. Like, yeah. You can do it too. You know okay. what I mean? And like, what's your goal? Like, who do you want to be right now? Yeah. Have them all write it down. I've already thought about it. You know, like, have them all write it down because one thing that I talk about a little bit is, you know, when we were kids, we dreamt that we would be X, Y, Z. And it was all these amazing things. There was no limiting self-beliefs. We didn't That's hold right. anything back. Like, man, I'm going to be, you know, if it was, I'm going to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be an astronaut, I'm going to go to the moon, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to be, a, you know, a rugby league player, I'm going to be an all black, I'm going to be something amazing. You know what I mean? Kids don't answer me that question anymore, honestly. I don't know, what are you passionate about? I don't know. What would you love to do? I don't know. Do you have a career in mind? No, no, nothing. I'm like, if they're like seven years old, I'm like, well, guess what? You've got plenty of, plenty of life ahead of you, man, and you can do anything you want. Like, yeah. If you don't, if you don't have anything now, shit, you, you you'll start. Find it. And hopefully that question is like, well, man, what do I want to do? <laughs> it, it's it's crazy the times have changed like that, though. Like, why, why and it that? might be that it might be that like parents aren't home to ask that question anymore. Yeah. Um. You know, because everyone has to work. Both people have to work. They they're at home and it's worrying about the dinner when they get home. Worried about getting the kids to bed when they get home. That you don't get their chance to say. You know what? You know what was the most amazing part about your day today? You know what did you love doing? You know what are you really looking forward to mm. this weekend? You know we've got school holidays coming. What would you really love to do? Yeah, you know, what it's funny we in? have those conversations with, that, with our daughter. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of our things. You know, like what was your favorite part about today? Yeah, and she's like, hmm. Um, my favorite part of the day was you coming home. Yeah, and then she's like, Dad. Uh, what was your favourite part of the day? <laughs> you know? And it's quite a cool conversation though. Yeah. You know, like, or you can talk about like, oh, like, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. She's like, oh, I think I want to go. You know, she's not even five years old, mate. Good. And Good. she's literally like, oh, I think I might want to go swimming um, and then I want to hang out with, all right, you know, yeah. you're like, and that, that's so cool. Like, so cool. Like, this is sports so awesome, like goal setting and future thinking and, and like putting yourself and on the victory podium visualization all that sort of stuff you learn that through sport and it's so adaptable to life oh, 100%. Like, man i wanted to be a, I, I have an obsessive personality in case anyone didn't realize but yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Me too. yeah but like mate i had the full bloody fireman kit when i was little yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was into it and then like um then i was gonna be a PE teacher in, in queenstown because i just wanted to take the kids snowboarding and skiing all, all winter and then go mountaineering and adventure racing and all that sort of stuff in Queen, it, yeah. queenstown and, and then it's like then i literally sat there watching my brother get his ice test and i was like now that's the shit i'm gonna yeah. do that <laughs> 12 years old and it was great because it meant like going through school what do i need to do oh yeah i gotta do this right. gotta do this yeah, yeah gotta do this gotta do this gotta do this next step and then i was like back to sport it's, like, it's interesting though like I'd love to ask you the question like where do you think that came from you know like do you think it was just who you were 
I'm again lucky. My my man's a run coach. He, he's a coach. Yeah. Uh, both my parents went to uni, so they like you know did steps to create careers and things like that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Because yeah, I feel like, like you just said, you know, like you ask kids these questions and they don't know. But like even going through school, you're like, oh, if I'm going to do that, then I need to really focus on these yeah. subjects. But I feel now. Both my grandparents, were, my grandfathers were coaches as well. Like my, my dad's dad coached rugby league, rugby union, mm. basketball, rowing, boxing. Um, my other granddad, he was like head coach um, for swimming in Invercargill. Like right, life, yeah, life yeah. member of the club, life member of the, of the, um, of the region. You know, like, so I guess like lots of modelling, eh? Like of, yeah. of, yeah. of how how to improve, how to get better. The steps you take, you know, it's yeah. not about what you are today; it's what you what you can be. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, yeah. So you 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 had some strong people to emulate. Yeah, which is how we learn as kids yeah. emulation. You know, so. yeah. And that's, 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 like, that's really like, cool. Like, like you say, like with your daughter, that power of just again. Aaron's not a podcast. I've gone over about it so much. There's so much good shit in there. I need to listen to it. Yeah, I'd go for it, man. But like, that's what they're saying. Like, it's especially as fathers, it's about the time and the actions that you model, especially the daughters. Like, this is this is what you should expect from a man. You know. Yes, like, I love that. Yeah. You know, and then the hope is that you don't have to be the person to tap them on the shoulder to say, "Hey, like that that guy's," you know, you know, and maybe it comes from. Being, being a bloke that probably made some average decisions as a, as a teenager but yeah. you know like so you, you're aware of how young and dumb guys are but, oh, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time it's like hopefully you can empower you know your daughter um, like oh, what's her name um, Elizabeth says you know try try teach your daughter boundaries and I was like yeah that's, that's that's a really good thought to take through like you know this is me. This is what I stand for. This is where I go. This is what I expect mm. from, from someone. Yeah. And um, I'm happy enough with myself to say, look, thank you, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Like, and I think it is really important too, like, to explain these things to your kids. And I even think, like, start young, eh? Like, mm. I mean, not going to sit here and, like, fucking preach or claim to be the fucking the parent who has it all figured out, but <laughs> definitely, <laughs> <neither>. definitely not. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, like, um, I work a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. Even though I work a lot, I still think I'm a fucking like extremely hands-on father. Like I want to give myself that compliment. Like yeah. I am a really hands-on dad. Like the fucking missus can go away Good. and leave me with the kids nice. like overnight, days, yeah. weeks. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna be fucking hard with the business, but like I can do it. You know, like I change shitty nappies. Yeah. I can give and make bottles. You know what I mean? Like where That's I know right. there are blokes who struggle to do that shit. Yeah. Um, get up in the middle of the night. Oh, I've got to go to work. It's like, well, your partner's got to get up and. Function. Parental day. Yeah, yeah, which is fucking tiring. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, like, I do work a lot as well. Yeah. And so, like, even, you know, on a Sunday, like, I'm in the office, you know, but, like, I, I, we explain to my daughter why I'm here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and we don't talk to her like she's an idiot either. Mm. Like, you know, like, hey, honey, I'm off to work. You know, and, that, and I'm off to work because, you know, dad pays for the house, mm. pays for the food, pays for the toys and when you go out to on play dates. You know, like, dad has to pay for that. Mm. And she's like, okay, cool. And so she'll even come up to me and be like, oh, daddy, off to work. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you, you go to work so we can have all these things, eh? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you go to work so so I can have money, eh? Like, no, yeah. absolutely not. So that I can have money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely not the second part. <laughs> no, cool, man. So uh, I don't know if you've heard my finishing off question. It's um, what's something that shows up in your life always that like whenever you're in flow, that kind of, mentality shows up it can be like quotes or or a way that you live your life like what's something that you'd share with people of of how when things are going well it that's why like kind of yeah i would i would almost be yeah i'll answer it when things are going well but i would almost argue it the other way yeah when nice. things aren't going well good um and so for me um it is one of those like entrepreneurship and, and taking risk in life. You know what I mean? Like entrepreneurship is a risk when we when we put ourselves out there and we go for a goal. It's a it's it's, it's a risk. You know what I mean? Like um, it's the risk of you know we, we we have these fears and there's the risk of like social embarrassment mm-hmm. of failing. You know what I mean? Like we're scared that if we fail, what are our friends and all these people going to say about us? Um, or it might be financial investment. Um, you know, we're going to put all this money in and hopefully it's going to come back out. If it doesn't. Again, you know, failure. How am I going to feel about that? And so sometimes 
when we are getting after a goal, when we are chasing anything meaningful in life, um, there is stress and there is pressure. And I, f- and I find some days, um, I don't know why, but I feel the pressure more than others. There's other days where the same stresses and pressures and challenges are there, but I'm just fighting through. Um, and then there's other days where I'm sitting there and I'm like, fuck, I'm really feeling the pressure today. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I do is I'll get to the point where it's like, cool, like it doesn't matter how much I work, I need to go get a workout in and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to sleep and then I'm going to wake up tomorrow. And then when I wake up the next day, I literally, when I wake up, when I'm driving to the office, I literally will say it like almost the entire way here. Like with all that, I know what I'm coming into. Like I'm coming into a fucking shit storm. Mm. Um, it's a, and it's a day of scrapping and it's a day of hard work and I just need to get after it. I just keep telling myself, new day, new opportunity. New day, new opportunity. New day, new opportunity. And it's just my way of programming my mind, of, of saying to the world, like, fuck what happened yesterday. Today is a new day and today I have a new opportunity to get after it, to achieve that goal, to get this thing done. And so that's my little thing, is like new day, new opportunity, and it's just simple and easy to remember, but yeah. Well, good. This has been awesome. Uh, hell of a time down on the Cuppley Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin, eh? Hang on, yeah. Justin. Justin. Yeah, it's a little here. And... Swim in the Mana Marina. <laughs> is it cold? That's good. That yeah. good. I think my feet are still cold. <laughs> yeah, good though. Good for the soul. Yeah. Well, good. We'll wrap it up. Thank you.